In September 1978, the body of a female between the ages of 20 and 25 years old was found near the old Byron Swinging Bridge in Rankin County, Mississippi. The victim was found wrapped in a blanket in an illegal landfill along the banks of the Pearl River. Unfortunately, the body had already experienced severe decomposition due to it lying there for at least seven days before being discovered. With no way to identify her, the Jane Doe was buried in a local cemetery in Pearl, Mississippi. Forty-four years later, on April 27, 2022, the Rankin County coroner had the body exhumed in hopes of finally identifying her. Once the remains were retrieved, her DNA was sent to Othram Labs for genetic genealogy. On February 12, 2023, Othram Labs were able to finally identify the Jane Doe as Tanya Leah Wills Mullins, who was 22 years old at the time of her death. Tanya was born on May 12, 1956, in Potter County, Texas, and was described as a sweet-spirited child who was also kind and caring. Tanya was said to have a beautiful voice, and in order to pass the time, she was often found singing. At the time she went missing, Tanya was married to James Mullins and had two daughters. While she was from Potter, Texas, it's believed she was living in Mississippi when she went missing. One theory is that she could be the victim of serial killer Samuel Little, but this has never been confirmed. As of 2023, this case remains an open and active investigation. In the early morning hours of June 3, 1978, the body of a severely injured unidentified male was found lying on Division Street east of Corona Avenue in Long Beach, California. The victim was between the ages of 15 and 19 years old and had the word paid stamped on his hand. With no way to identify him, he became known as John Doe 1978. While his identity remained unknown, circumstantial evidence was found at the scene that possibly linked him to convicted serial killer Randy Kraft, aka the freeway killer or scorecard killer. This theory stuck around for 40 years before ultimately being ruled out. Attempts were made over the years to obtain DNA suitable for investigative genealogy, but because the remains were so badly degraded and chemically damaged, that wasn't possible. That is, until they contracted with Othram Labs. Othram was able to successfully develop DNA for testing. Once they had the DNA, they were able to create a DNA profile to be used for genetic genealogy. Finally, in September 2022, John Doe, 1978, was identified as Kenneth Nevada Williams, who was a 15-year-old runaway from La Puente, California. Sadly, after running away, he was never reported missing. Kenneth was born on September 2, 1964, in Los Angeles, California. He was known to struggle in school and had attended Hacienda La Puente Unified School and Sierra Vista Middle School before enrolling at Fairgrove Academy. He remained at Fairgrove for nine days before running away on October 27, 1977. Before Kenneth vanished, he had run away multiple times but would always return. Kenneth even lived with his father in Oregon for a little while before returning to La Puente. When he would run away, he would usually travel to downtown Los Angeles and Hollywood. They said it would typically take around a week to find out his location, and they would go and bring him home. However, when he returned, he would become depressed and unhappy. While his family spent years searching for him, they never reported him missing because they assumed he had started a new life and would return one day. They said he was never into drugs, but loved the big city and enjoyed going to clubs. As of 2023, his case remains an open and active investigation. On January 18, 2021, the remains of a male were found off Route 68 near Dewey Road and Agua Fria Drive in Golden Valley, Arizona. 
Unable to identify him, he became known as the 2021 Golden Valley John Doe. In February 2021, he was entered into NamUs, but no matches were found. Two years later, in February 2023, Mojave County Sheriff's Office partnered with Othram Labs. After creating a DNA profile, the in-house genealogy team got to work on identifying potential leads. Once the leads were sent over to the Mojave County Sheriff's Office, they were able to identify the unknown man as 56-year-old Brian Crane. He was reported missing by his family on September 17, 2020, after they had not heard from him in a few weeks. While looking for information on Brian, I stumbled upon his Facebook page and saw a post from March 22, 2021, where a friend of his was desperately seeking answers as to his whereabouts. There are also some really, really strange and interesting posts by Brian. In one, he sounds upset about someone trespassing on his property, which was only a few weeks before he ultimately went missing. He also appeared to be a Satan worshiper who was into satanic metal, sometimes referred to as black metal. There are even three videos on his page that are very creepy and basically the same with different colors. I'll play one real quick for y'all. In addition to that, there are multiple posts referring to a person named Kristan Goldstein and another one named Amanda Barr. He even mentioned wanting the three of them to go to Rome, New York. In one post, he types Amanda Barr's name with the mark of the beast intertwined. I was also checking out some of his links and stumbled upon his Mixcloud page and saw multiple quotes from Charles Manson. I'm not sure what to make of all this, but my opinion is, and this is just my opinion, that Brian was probably dealing with some serious issues in his life. According to his Twitter page, he was into drugs, death, and destruction. I'm not sure, however, if this played a role in his own death. I can at least say that I'm glad his friends and family have closure now that he has been identified. On Mother's Day, May 10th, 2020, authorities received multiple 911 calls regarding a body that had washed up on the shore of Jamaica Beach near Kahala Drive in Galveston, Texas. The deceased male was a drowning victim who was found wearing swimming trunks and black Calvin Klein briefs with size 11 Under Armour slides strapped to his hands. Investigators believe he was trying to use his slides as a flotation device. Unfortunately, with no identification on him, he would go unidentified for the next couple of years. Finally, in 2023, with the help of Othram Labs, he was identified as 24-year-old Calvin Mwambo, an exchange student from Tanzania. In April 2021, his family added him to NamUs because they hadn't heard from him in almost a year. They also posted his photo and information to a Facebook group called Tanzanians in the USA. According to his family, he was living in Houston, Texas around the time he disappeared and was studying at Lone Star College. Interestingly, five months ago, someone on Reddit figured out that the victim was most likely Calvin. I also stumbled upon a video of Calvin from 2014 where he can be seen talking to the camera and showing off his soccer skills. I'm 17 years old. My height is 5.5 feet. I'm playing position number 11, number 7. As of 2023, the circumstances surrounding his death remain unknown. On July 30th, 1980, the remains of an unknown man were discovered in a wooden crate at Lockport Locks Power Plant in Chicago, Illinois. The body was discovered when power plant employees were moving the crate, along with other debris from a grate that prevents objects from flowing into the power plant. Once the crate was removed, it was loaded onto a truck and dumped on the property of the power plant. At some point during all of this, the crate accidentally broke open, revealing a body inside. Due to no identification and advanced decomposition, they were unable to identify the person. 
but they were able to determine that the John Doe was the victim of a homicide who died from multiple gunshot wounds. The body had also remained in the water for a couple of weeks before ultimately being found. Investigators believe the male was between the ages of 25 and 35 years old with light brown to blonde hair. When he was found, he was wearing dark blue work pants with a Gym 5 laundry mark on them. His keys and clothing indicated that he was likely a laborer who might have been an auto mechanic or a truck driver. His fingerprints were taken and submitted to federal databases but failed to return any matches. Despite exhaustive efforts from law enforcement, his identity would remain unknown for the next 42 years. In June 2022, the Will County Coroner's Office had the remains exhumed and then partnered up with Autham Labs. Once a DNA profile was created, they turned to genetic genealogy, and finally, they were able to identify him as 29-year-old Webster Fisher. Webster was born on September 25, 1950, in Russellville, Alabama, to parents Ralph and Eva. At some point, he moved to Chicago, got married, and had three children. In mid-July 1980, Webster's wife said he left to go get cigarettes at a nearby gas station, but never returned. One theory is that the Chicago Mafia murdered Webster, but that has yet to be confirmed. As of 2023, his case remains an open and active investigation. On February 25, 1990, two hikers discovered partial skeletal remains of a female near Hilltop Road on Shoshone Mountain in Lander County, Nevada. The homicide victim was found with multiple injuries to her head, but they couldn't determine if these occurred before or after her death. Her remains were also scattered across a very wide area, and her torso was never found. This location is known as the Big Lonely, and is home to many strange disappearances over the years. This has led investigators to believe that a serial killer who possibly works as a long-haul truck driver uses this area as a dumping ground. With no identification and very few clues found at the scene, her identity would go unknown for the next 30 years. In 2010, she was entered into the NamUs database, but no matches were found. In June 2022, Nevada State Police partnered with Autham Labs to help identify the Jane Doe. With the help of genetic genealogy, the victim was finally identified as Judy Menzaneris of Salt Lake City. Judy was only 19 years old when she was reported missing in 1989. Besides this, there is very little information about Judy, and her case remains an open and active investigation. On September 10, 1987, 71-year-old Charles Humphreys and his 11-year-old grandson were hunting for squirrels in the woods around the 2200 block of Liberty Road and Atkinson Avenue near the former site of Mount Hope Cemetery in Youngston, Ohio, when they found a human skull. When investigators arrived, they discovered multiple other bones that belonged to the same person. The bones were then taken to the Youngstown State University Anthropology Department for further examination, but they ended up sitting there until August 2021. That's when an anthropology student from the early 2000s by the name of Alyssa Yelkin remembered the skull and bones and reached out to the police with concerns that the bones had remained unidentified for the last 34 years. Once they had the bones, a 3D bust was created of the man who appeared to be of African-American descent. After releasing the bust to the public, they received a tip from a man in Cincinnati who believed the remains belonged to his friend, a 19-year-old Caucasian man by the name of Theodore Long, who went by Teddy and went missing from Toledo, Ohio in 1981. While the remains found in 1987 weren't his friends, the tip at least wasn't wasted and actually helped investigators in Toledo finally identify Theodore Long's long-lost remains. 
With both departments working on the case, they determined that an unidentified man had been fished out of Paint Lake near Lamp Road in Fayette County, Ohio, on November 17, 1981. After checking Teddy's fingerprints against those of the unidentified remains, they were a match. However, as of 2023, Teddy's murder remains unsolved. As for the remains in Youngstown, Ohio, investigators, with the help of the Porchlight Project, decided to send them to Othram Labs for advanced DNA testing. Othram was then able to create a DNA profile, and the Porchlight Project performed the genetic genealogy. Finally, after 46 years, the victim was identified as Robert Earl Sanders. 22-year-old Robert was last seen by his mother on August 9, 1976, and then reported missing on August 13, 1976. Unfortunately, there is very little information about Robert, but as of 2023, his case remains an open and active investigation. On September 17, 1989, at about 12.25 p.m. in Lincoln County, Mississippi, a man traveling from Tennessee came across the remains of a female behind some bushes at a rest area on Interstate 55. The woman was found only wearing socks and had more than a dozen marks on her body that investigators believed were bite marks. However, Dr. Michael West was the expert bite mark witness in the case, and he has been widely discredited. If you want to know more about Dr. West, I suggest watching the Netflix series Innocence Project. As for the Jane Doe, her ultimate cause of death was from manual strangulation, and it's believed she was murdered elsewhere before ultimately being dumped at the rest area. While investigators were unable to identify her, they were at least able to arrest a suspect in relation to her murder. 26-year-old Alfred Ray Case of Brookhaven, Mississippi, was arrested and convicted of manslaughter and sentenced to 20 years in prison. He had basically confessed to the murder after being arrested for assaulting his mother-in-law. Kay said that she was a sex worker that he picked up in New Orleans with the intention of robbing her, but he never knew her name. On December 14, 1989, she was buried at Rose Hill Cemetery in Brookhaven. In 2009, she was entered into the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System, but no matches were found. In 2022, the Mississippi State Medical Examiner's Office partnered with Othram Labs, who was able to generate a DNA profile. Othram's in-house genealogy team was then able to provide investigators with potential leads. Finally, on May 10, 2022, investigators were able to identify the Jane Doe as Melinda Lou Barnhouse. Melinda was originally from Maryland, but any information besides this is scarce, and as of 2023, it remains unknown how she ended up in New Orleans. On September 16, 1993, the remains of a woman were found in a building in a wooded area covered with pine straw on Ranchwood Drive in DeKalb County, Georgia. The location was behind a Fairfield Inn and a vacant medical office near La Vista Road and the I-285 interstate. Investigators believed the woman was a homicide victim who had been sexually assaulted. She had multiple broken bones, and her ultimate cause of death was due to blunt force trauma. However, with no identification found on or near the body, she would remain unknown for the next 29 years. Over the years, there were multiple attempts to identify her, but sadly, they were all unsuccessful. She also had extensive dental work and a hip replacement, but even with that, they were still unable to identify her. At some point, she was even thought to be the victim of serial killer Larry DeWayne Hall, but they've never been able to link him to the evidence. In 2022, the DeKalb County Medical Examiner's Office sent the evidence over to Othram Labs. After creating a DNA profile, the FBI genetic genealogy teams got to work and were able to identify the Jane Doe as 52-year-old Rebecca Burke. 
Rebecca, who went by Becky, was last known to live in Marietta or Smyrna, Georgia, and possibly went by the last names McChesney or Barnes. Unfortunately, there is very little information in this case, and as of 2023, it remains an open and active investigation. On November 14, 2020, an unidentified woman was found in critical condition outside an abandoned home near Michigan Street in Indianapolis, Indiana. She was suffering from hypothermia and was rushed to the Community East Hospital, where she would sadly later die. In April 2021, she was entered into NamUs, but no matches were found. In 2023, the Marion County Coroner's Office partnered with Othram Labs, who were able to create a DNA profile. With the use of their in-house genetic genealogy team, they were able to provide investigators with some promising leads. Finally, in April 2023, she was identified as 60-year-old Patricia Anna Anderson. Patricia was born on November 27, 1960, and lived in California. However, it is unclear when or how she ended up in Indiana. I did a deep dive on the internet, trying to find some kind of history on Patricia, but was unsuccessful. I believe I stumbled upon multiple family members' Facebook pages, but there was never any mention of Patricia. My guess is she most likely lost touch over the years. As a final note, I'd like to give a shout out to Audio Chuck for funding this case. 